everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by the one and only. I'm going to do that again. I didn't like that. Actually, I'm no. not. <laughs> I'm joined by the one and only Rich Dambolian. What's going on, Rich? What's up, man? That, I was going to say, I, was, I would have I been a little upset if you had to retake that because that all hit me like right in the chest. That was perfect. They were like, I tricked you. I tricked Ow. all of you. Ow, I got a professional wrestling. Uh, you like the you like the high one. You like <laughs> do, you I, like it when it's very high. You don't like the serious one. I love it when it's high and like very show busy. Like <laughs> ow, thank professional wrestling. <laughs> That's my favorite. I um, like Carol Channing. Well, thank you. I have no control over the production machine or the show. This is very strange for me to only do a show without any control over anything today. Our uh, our. Wonderful producer MG will be switching the cameras, so mm -hmm. all the mess ups will be on him. <laughs> happy uh, exactly. happy Night of Champions week uh, Saturday. Happy Double or Nothing weekend. Happy Memorial Day for everybody in the United States. This is a busy, busy weekend for all of us. A lot yeah. is ha happening in pro wrestling. We've gotten, uh, you know, I think this is AEW summer to make. I think WWE needs to consistently put out good product like they have been. I, this is a very unique time for pro wrestling, Rich. Uh, yeah, dude. Um, it always is around this time of year, too. I feel like it's like, I don't want to say it's like the build to SummerSlam, but it's like the build to summertime. So you get like cool stuff, you know? Um, I think Night of Champions is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be a good show. I think Double or Nothing's going to be a good show. And then there's that mystery NXT show that I just found out about. <laughs> like Before we went on the air, you guys were like, yo, there's an NXT show tomorrow. I'm like, what? Yeah, dude. Since, since when? Since when? When did this happen? You want to go down the news? Let's go down this because we have a ton to talk about. Yeah, let's hit it. All right. So uh, AEW officially announced United Center. For the June 17th debut of Collision on this week's Dynamite, the general sale starts today. Pre-sale was yesterday. Well, well, he's wrong there in the notes, obviously, because he wrote this yesterday. The pre-sale started today, yeah. yesterday. The regular yeah. sale started yesterday. The pre-sale was the day prior. Um, he is moving tickets. Not as fast as uh, some anticipated. I think it's moving fine. And I think once mm -hmm. people... You know, think about it, right? It's a bad weekend to release these tickets. It actually should have been last week. Yeah, absolutely. It's a holiday weekend. People are spending money. Your hardest yeah, exactly. of the hardcore are at the event. Uh, you have people very preoccupied with other things. So I I'm not looking at this as, oh, man, he only moved 6,000 tickets or whatever. I'm seeing this as, okay, it's a bad week, and you haven't really announced his return. I think they're going to start alluding more and more coming up to this. But it's a very busy time. You got mm -hmm. you got this show happening. The following week, you have Forbidden Door happening. You got All Out. That's going to happen. You have All In that's going to happen. And then yeah, now you got to sell tickets every week for this show. It's a lot of burnout, man. It's a lot of burnout, and especially because all the shows are relatively kind of in the same area. So you would think there's a lot of crossover between, like, you know, the Canadian fans and the Chicago fans and all that stuff. Yeah, I think it is a lot of burnout. But let, let's see what happens here. I, I am hopeful that they'll have 10,000 yeah. people in that building for punk. You know, it'll be a big moment for them. Uh, speaking of punk, um, as per Fightful and PW Torch, the issues between punk and AEW are believed to have been resolved, no news on how he will be introduced. Now, this has been an interesting um, news bite over the last couple of weeks where it's a very will they, won't they yeah. in terms of like, you know, is he going to show up? Will he show up? Where? What? They're not announcing anything. Did it fall apart? Who knows? Yeah, I, I didn't jump into the speculation last week. I don't know if you noticed that. I was there. I noticed you know, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think I was there. Or yeah. are you talking about uh, we're live pal with Garrett that I've never been invited on? You are invited. When do you want to come on? I will come on next Tuesday. Okay. But like I said, like I said, my thing is I'm making you agree that you've agreed to have me on. Yes. I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting for you to remember and be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> come on the show today. Dude, I'm going to tell you. I I'm going to tell you 100%. <laughs> that is always the issue with me, okay? And I'm going to put this out there. If if you know me, okay, which I think a lot of people that watch the show know me, I mm. am 
game for everything. However, I have the memory of a turnip. I will forget. <laughs> I will forget. You need to remind me how many times, Matt, do I tell you, hey, dude, I'm going to send you money, but hound me to send it to you because I will forget. And then I'm, I'm, I feel guilty. Asking, and then he feels so guilty. It's... And I'm like, no, it's money I'm giving you. You just, he's also my secretary. So he has to remind yeah. these things. Oh, is that why he keeps bending down at the waist? <laughs> <laughs> he's dropping his pencil, bending Don't down at the waist to pick it up. Yeah. Not even see. 10 minutes in and we went there. Uh, by the way, you want to see something really cool? I am wearing yeah. short shorts here. So I got to pull my Ooh, shorts down that. a little bit. Yeah. yeah pull that skirt uh, down. <laughs> look at these, dude. Look how awesome these are. Oh, those are awesome. Yeah. Yo, I gotta go to a single shot. Gotcha. There you go. Look at these things. Not that I'm not that I'm selling these or I got these for I bought these. I think they are freaking awesome. Uh, those are really X, cool. X Pac looks great. Bah, always. Uh Hogan looks like a maniac. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, like, these are the coolest fucking things to put out. Like, for me, like, I don't buy toys. I don't collect them. Yeah. I'm not a toy collector. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. I know Matt as, Cardona's big into this. Like, I don't do it because it's... it's as you say that, you're surrounded by toys. <laughs> as I say that, I'm surrounded by toys. I like it for my set, and I, like... Maybe I am one of these people. Maybe I am a toy collector now. Maybe that Why has not, happened. Man. Listen, if you if you want to open those floodgates, I'll give you the icky on it. It's a it's a notorious and nasty, dastardly business, it, dude. You know what's crazy? So I went to Target with Taylor on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and there were these gr grown men, okay, mm -hmm. on the phone, and they're like, "No, no, no! Is this the, is it the the gray variant, the Batman, or the blue variant that we need?" And oh they yeah, bought, dude! They bought every they bought everything oh. in the aisle, everything in the aisle, and I looked at them and I was like. You're a piece of shit, you know? Yeah, those guys stink, man. I hate that. As a toy collector myself, um, I, I don't want to go too far deep into 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 all this stuff. But I'm very jovial when I go to Target, and I'm like, ah, oh, let me see if they got this thing. And they usually don't. It's because these guys show up as soon as the doors open and just like yeah. buy everything, you know? Or they have a hookup that they'll pay like fifty bucks to, and then they're not get buying it to collect. They're buying it to sell for like ten times oh, yeah. the amount. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's it's gnarly. And then uh, you know, look you... at this Trent in the chat, right? I'm working at Target right now, and Andrew's completely correct. Yeah, dude. Uh, and, and I'm like, you know, there's a kid that I'm sure is like wants that, right? But like you're buying right. it for like eighteen dollars or whatever the toy is, and now you're gonna jack the price up to sixty bucks and sell it on the internet. Whatever. But, it's a it's an open economy. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But but it, it's, it's also a, a local shit. thing. It's also is a it? local thing too, because our targets get drained like super quick just because of the the how much population we have here my brother lives in albany <clears throat> his targets and there's numerous targets they have everything everything anything that i would want he'd call me up and be like hey there's like 40 of these on the shelf do you yeah. want one i'm like absolutely you know so there's it's a no, very different yeah there was no wrestling toys which i found interesting like barely any there was uh one drew mcintyre wwe thing there was like a weird wwe legends thing with uh the wild samoans and then there was Nyla Rose. That's it. Yeah. That's all the wrestling that existed. Fascinating. A lot of shelf warmers. A lot of shelf. I think Drew's. Sorry, I don't know what happened. My brain just stopped. I went into a, a rant here about toy well, you, collecting. You, you talked about your terrible memory, and this was the result of it. Uh, it happened. I think uh, I think you need some ginkgo biloba, babe. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're uh, moving on. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Mercedes Monet, Monet, money. Injured at NJPW Resurgence, the reports is that she was slated to win the New Japan Women's Strong title, but she called an audible, and now Willow Nightingale is the new champion. Yeah, um, she broke her ankle. Ooh. That's the story, right? Which, I mean, part of this is that we found out yesterday that she there were plans for her to be at Forbidden Door. Yeah. And, you know, now that's probably not happening, but you could still maybe do something with her if it's not that bad. An ankle, you know, it's almost like what's how long was Styles out? Ooh, AJ? Yeah. It's a couple oh, of months. I don't know, man. A couple yeah. months, right? I feel like more than that. Depends I feel on like... the severity of it. Depending on the severity of it. I mean, it can be a three. You can be you can be back in like six weeks. Um, but it's it's, I think it's depending some, you know, on the severity shockingly, of it. It, it's better than a sprained ankle at times. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know, so mm-hmm. we'll um I'm curious who what she was gonna do. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe she'll come back. Good for Willow though. You know, there's been a lot of attention on Willow. Obviously, you could tell that Tony's very high on Willow. Um Big you know, feature trying to... this weekend, dynamite for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So interesting, you know, the shift over. On the same show, Tony Storm showed up to help Juice Robinson beat Fred Rosser. Moxley, Wheeler from BCC, and Shooter defeated Chaos, setting up a tag match at Dominion featuring Moxley and Okada. Is that the Forbidden Very... Door match? No, that's know. Dominion. That's Dominion. That could but, be. No, no. But, no, no. I'm yeah. saying, like, for going from the tag match so they get used to each other, is the Forbidden Door match John Moxley versus Okada? Um, I'd be okay with that. Okay, but here's the thing. Is Punk going to be on the show? Again, who knows, man? Again, will they, won't they? Will they, won't they? No, I mean, he's showing up the week prior, right? He's showing up 10 days prior to this. So, is that definite, or are we going to get another report of his no, guys no. freaking out it, in the it, lobby listen, because they it, don't have it, enough mineral water <laughs> and brownies for him? I I don't think we're going to get that. I think he's there. I think it's it, it's it's fine for now. Wow. I think they. I think, I, I think I Rich think just fine. heel turned on Punk. I know, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's fine now. I think they're okay. But, you know, you never know. You know, uh, Warner was very, uh, they, you know, they had graphics done mo- weeks ago. Weeks ago. By the way, that Samoa yeah, Joe yeah. graphic, I'm going to say this. That Samoa Joe CM Punk graphic that somehow leaked mm-hmm. um, is 100% accurate. That was made. Yeah. Too bad, man. Because I, I, was, I sent it to I, you, I lost, Rich, like a I month ago. My, I lost my shit when you sent that to me, man. <laughs> and I said, I said, Rich, I'm going to show you something, but you can never show anybody else. And as he said that, I was on the end. And then it was my wee-wee. <laughs> <laughs> it was my wee-wee. <laughs> That's all I showed him. Um, I, I think, listen, it, it's... If you're talking to business-wise, right? Warner Media wants him, obviously. How do you not? And why do you think they have a two-hour show on Saturdays now instead of a yeah. one-hour show on Saturday that that would highlight? You know, Tony even said, uh, I think I was it during his presser where he was saying that you know the reason why collision, uh, dark and dark elevation are gone, it was an exchange. They added mm-hmm. collision, so now you'll have more talent on there, and then more talent will go to Ring of Honor. Right, it makes all the sense in the world. It does. And they are exclusive on Warner Media. They are exclusive uh, to to their properties. They they're not going to put it on YouTube, and it's pointless for them. They're not making any money with those shows, right? So right. might as well turn this into something that you can make some money with, and good for him. Uh, but you do need CM Punk on that show. I think so. Yeah, I think. Listen, I think you definitely if you if you want to cross that line, you do need the guy in a certain capacity somewhere appearing for your company and doing media and doing all this stuff. You know. Yeah. Well, you know what's wild? It's, it's you know, depending on how hard or soft the split is, it's a whole separate promotion. Exactly. Like, you know, a, like, like almost like a real brand split. It, yeah, like if you look at that roster, right? Like look at that roster. Miro, Andrade, Hobbs, uh, Punk. Let's say you put Pac on there. Uh, who's Ooh. another guy that maybe hasn't been highlighted as well as he should or she should, right? You know... I I would have said Malachi, but I feel like they're doing okay with with that whole thing. Uh, Malachi is working in the trios, but yeah, I have gotten exhausted with the number of trios that exist in that company. A lot of trios, man. Yeah, okay, but this is what you want. This is what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted. Everybody that wanted title. this gang warfare, right? You want yeah. factions, which is fine. But I think the issue is there's too many in and outs happening with these. Like yeah. Ethan Page teamed up with. Um, who did he team up with on Rampage? I just watched it. It was a trios match. Yeah. I, okay. um, you know, like, okay, Ethan Page, great, great guy, right? I, I want to see Ethan Page have a nice mid card singles run. Absolutely. TNT title. Okay. Put it with the TNT title. Do something there. Uh, I think now that you had that second show, you're going to have more of this. Part of that is also, represent, you know, having these guys on TV. Part of that is, is that problem. That they need to be on TV. You want to get these guys on TV. You're paying them these salaries. You don't want them to sit at home. You don't want them sitting in the back and only doing, you know, dark matches. So what do you do? You team them up and they show up on TV. Yeah. 
I also I'm curious what's happening with Dan Housen because I think I do think CM Punk has custody three days a week of him. <laughs> right? Punk does have still, custody is he of Dan Housen. He's still banged up, right? Dan Housen? Like busted arm, yeah. Something like that. I love him. I love him. Uh so does CM Punk. He loves Dan Housen. So maybe you move Dan Housen there. There you go. That'd be fun. Yeah, I think we this. need more, a couple more spooky guys too. Do you count House of Black as like a spooky trio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're spooky trio okay. for sure. Yeah. But you know what's amazing, okay? Which is fascinating. Rhea is in a spooky trio too, right? Or a quad. She's, she's it's a, a spooky four, stable. Yeah. Right? It's a spooky stable. Yeah. Isn't it an extension of that stable in a weird way? I think it kind of is because, you know, Buddy Murphy's in there. You know what? I Talk about Forbidden Door. How great would that be if you had like a seven on seven with House of Black and Judgment Day? Versus, I mean, that really is a Forbidden Door. You know, that's like the true Forbidden Door right there. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Imagine if that happens. We have that at the club, by the way. What? Like a Forbidden a Door forbidden seven door. on seven? We have a Forbidden yeah. Door. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm not allowed to open that door. I don't know what happens in there. Does it go just it's like there's nothing on the other side? It just it's just like <laughs> just an empty hole. You just like fall on. Pretty the sure that's like totally out. different. Do you remember the Simpsons where where uh, who was it? Barry Barry Bonds falls into that abyss on The Simpsons. Was it Barry Bonds or Ozzy Smith? I don't remember. One, one of them. them. Yeah, one yeah. of them. He just fall. That that <laughs> that's what it's like. Shave those sideburns, Mattingly. <laughs> uh, um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, so, so Mercedes yeah. Monet. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm hoping that she comes back quick. Uh, you know, especially for AEW, if you want to... Listen, I'm not going to get into the argument on how much of a draw Mercedes is, right? I'm not going to get into that argument. Yeah. I have yeah, no yeah. way of measuring that because I, there's no... I don't, I don't speculate on stuff like that. I want to see hard numbers. <laughs> but brand recognition, name recognition, facial recognition, people know who she is. She is a big name in professional wrestling for... A decade now in WWE. Yep. She is an asset to have. And if she... Punk and her are the two names, let's say, on this show, uh, I, I think it would definitely help with building that roster. Uh, Mercedes is such a fan favorite. I think folks underestimate how much people love her. Listen, normal people love her. Right, normal exactly. wrestling fan, <laughs> no, normal wrestling fan. Not me, not you. Not uh, again. Listen, she's great. I, I'm not. I'm not saying I don't like her. But the ones that are on the internet that are habitually saying she's not good, those guys really, in the in the in the grand scheme of things, don't matter when it comes to TV. There's casual a, fans are casual fans, and they tune in for what they like, and they need to grow it, that. There's an interesting question for you. It's like a chicken and egg conversation. Like, is there such thing as a normal wrestling fan? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a lot of people that watch uh, just to watch. And <laughs> I think there are people really that high go, right there. Yeah. Your voice went up really high, it's which lying. makes me think that you're, you're, you don't believe it at all. <laughs> are, am I normal? Do you think I'm normal? No. I'm far from it. There's <laughs> nothing normal about me. I tell you how abnormal you are at several times during the week. Regularly. You guys have no idea. Rich will message me Regular. and he goes, you know, you are, you are not, you are not. If they, if there was ever like a, like a thing where they had to find out who's like a functioning person in society, they would discover that you, you don't even come close. No, you're a functioning person in society. I think, but I think we're all slightly abnormal, you know, not like we're Frankensteins and shit, but like, mm. <laughs> there's, you know. that's what I want to be. No, MG's you a wanna, Frankenstein. You want <laughs> you want <laughs> Frankenstein. Uh, uh, let's see. Tony Storm right. showed up to help Juice Robinson beat Fred Rosser. Moxley, we spoke about this. Raw average 1.64 viewers on Monday night against the Lakers versus Nuggets. Lakers got swept. <laughs> Yeah, and nobody's talking about that. All people are talking about is what's LeBron going to do now, which is kind of bullshit. A little NBA talk right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dakota Kai and Liv Morgan suffered injuries last week. Dakota had her knee. Had knee. Oh, wow. She had knee on her ACL. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. I didn't know it was on her ACL. Liv was reported, uh, reported to have sh- shoulder I- an injury, and she'll be out most of the summer. What else do we have, Rich? 
Uh, it looks like as per Dave Meltzer's uh, newsletter, WWE is, this is like a kind of no-brainer. WWE is focusing on younger stars going forward as most of the top stars right now are in their 30s and 40s. You know, WWE has always been notorious for like their youth movement, you know, which forced a lot of our classic guys out of the ring over several years, right? Like your Hogan, your Macho yeah. Man, even your Steve Austin, you know? Um, but who do they got? Who do they got besides Austin Theory that is like a young, well, un well under thirty superstar? Smack uh, SmackDown last week, not not mm -hmm. this Fridays, but the prior. Uh, I mean, I, I be honest with you, I didn't get a chance to watch this Fridays, but it was taped, so I, I saw the results last week. That whole show was highlighting all those young NXT guys. Yeah, you know, so they they're realizing that they need to make a shift, but I, I don't. I'm not connecting with those characters. Grayson Waller right. and I don't, I'm not connected to that. I don't know why. Right. It doesn't do anything for me. Uh, yeah. I know that Austin Theory is a good worker, but I don't think that he's anywhere near ready to be, you know, in that top positioning. They're working on it. They're, they're building them. It takes time. Oh, but for they, sure. They definitely have a focus right now because, yeah, most of their top stars are not just in their 30s. They're in their mid-30s. And late 40s yeah. and mid 40s. And yeah, mid, mid, like late 30s, early 40s, like Balor's over 40. Um, I think AJ's Damian Priest over is a, 40. Damian Priest, Damian is, Priest over is a 40. grandpa. Yeah. Dude, Damian Priest is an eternal. Oh, yeah, 100%. That he, guy's immortal. Yeah. He, he, he is looking better and better, by the way. Yeah, he looks like a Heck, million. Roman bucks, Reigns though. just turned 38 yes, like two days ago. So Roman's 38. He's a, you know, up there. yeah. I'm just putting this yeah. out there. When Hogan turned 38 yeah. and when Cena turned 38, they were saying, well, it's over. Yeah, you're done, right? Macho Man. John mm -hmm. Cena. John Cena at 38. Everybody was freaking out, like, "Oh, you know, he's 38, so they, he's old now. He's old." Wild, and like that's why they put Randy on uh, commentary years ago, right? Yeah, at at 40 years old, they said he was old. Wild. Wow. Yeah. Flair. By the way, Flair when he won that when he won the WWE title was 41 and a half years old. Jeez. And he was an old man. Hogan Everybody's is younger than him, and Hogan yeah. was in his he was not even forty then. So yeah. fascinating, you know, fascinating how times have changed. You know, they, people look better; they take care of themselves. Peptides, well, also, bro, it's all about those peptides. It's fountain also, of youth. I also think this is um, this is the perfect example of the difference between pro wrestling and sports entertainment, right? Whereas, like, let's take a guy like um, Takeshita. Right. Super young dude. And you imagine his career to go super, super effing long like a Tanahashi. Yeah. Right. And Austin Theory, it's like, all right, they're going to build this guy up to burn him out by the time he's 40. And that's it. You know, like they're, they're keeping those appearances up. It's very fascinating when you think about stuff like that. Look how many Japanese superstars are still around like Minoru Suzuki, Liger. Yeah. You know, these guys dude, wrestle Asuka. well into like their older age. Yeah. O Asuka's born in 81. Oh, wow. That's interesting. She's 42. She's going to be 42. Unbelievable. She looks like a million bucks. She's just yeah. awesome. Times are changing, man. Times are changing. People take care of themselves a lot better. That We have conditioning now. We have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have these old men. But I do understand. WWE is realizing that these guys, you know, it's not so much about how you're looking and how you're wrestling. It's more about the injuries. Yeah. And, you know, like Styles. He's a guy that never got injured. And now he had an injury. You know, it gets harder in your 40s. Your body starts breaking down. Yeah. Dude, by the way, I'm about to reinvent myself. Oh, boy. Here it comes. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm excited. Telling everybody. I'm excited for it. I got my TRT coming. I got my peptides coming. I'm going to be a monster. It's happening. You bought all this stuff from the Liver King, right? <laughs> yeah, that's who I buy it from. <laughs> Dude, did, I, I set, did I send you the photo? Yeah, <laughs> I sent Jeff a picture of the liver cake, and I was like, "I was like, this is me in six weeks." <laughs> She's like, "No, thank you." you get duped by the liver? Did you just get duped? The last guy to get duped by the liver king into like what? What was it? In the all liver diet? He's yeah, that's all he does, dude. He doesn't do any kind of enhancement. Oh yeah, he's a, he looks like a real that's not a HGH dude. belly. That's not <laughs> HGH belly. Oh, are you gonna do HGH? Uh, the peptides uh, release natural HGH. They hit your pituitary gland, and your body creates its own natural HGH. So you are going to look like a Frankenstein. I am going to look like a Frankenstein. I can't <laughs> freaking wait. 
I can't wait to see this transformation where you can't fit into your shirt. You're too uh, wide to walk through doorways. Yeah. You're just like real jacked. You know what I'm going to do? You. When I see, when I'm going <laughs> to get big and I'm going to see Dave and I'm going to put him in a headlock and I'm going to say, whose biceps are better now? I don't know if you want to do that, man. Dave is, uh, he's like the nemesis from uh, Resident Evil 3. <laughs> Start morphing into like different shapes. Oh my God, he's Sean Ross Sapp. John Albanel. <laughs> it's like Clayface. <laughs> yeah, it's like Clayface. Yeah, from Batman. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> uh, by the way, I have dinner with John Alba on Thursday, I think. Oh, how was that? Yeah. How'd that go? No, no, we're going next week. Oh, you're going next week? Mm -hmm. Is this going to turn into like a face off situation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to swap faces. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, Dakota's injured. We spoke about that. Dave said, yeah, focus on younger talent. Yeah, absolutely. I think they, they need to do this. They need to constantly mm -hmm. evolve. Dynamite did 846,000 viewers, which is the best since April 26th. They also had some competition, which is good. They, they're, they're maintaining here at that number. They just need to grow now. Tony Khan's conference call notes. He would not confirm a brand split after the collision debut. He wants people to be surprised. He said Sabu's cool. appearance is most likely a one-off. I'm sure. You know, he, he really can't wrestle anymore, right? How, uh, how many years have we been talking about Sabu showing up? Okay. Rich and I, for people that have not been following us since AEW debuted, okay? We have made the joke that every time the lights go off, Tony, <laughs> Tony like, wants Sabu to come. He's been teasing Sabu this whole time. And we're like, oh, it's Sabu. Well, no, it's John Moxley. No, it's Sabu. No, it's Kenny Omega. Finally, it happened. I and want the lights, the lights on and off. lights off. I know. That's how I wanted this <laughs> announcement. But you know what? Mm -hmm. They really wanted to play that, 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 that copy of the theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by, whoever did that did a great job. Close enough, dude. Maybe have been Ruckus. Was it Ruckus? Close enough. Yeah. Good job. Um, a lot of fun. Again, like we were calling that during the, uh, during the pandemic where they were doing the shows in Jacksonville. Like, oh, you know, it'd be great next week. Sabu shows up. Sabu shows up. That's it. Uh, so Sa Sabu showed up. You know, can he do something with Chris Jericho? Oh, yeah, dude. Is he going to go for an Arabian face buster? And, oh, so. it and like totally miss the mark? Who else was? Because this a lot of folks are screaming ECW on this, right? But Sabu and Jericho were in war together, wrestling in romance, right? Yeah. Who else was in that promotion that they could use? It's very obscure. Uh, that I don't know who else was there. I I don't know who was there. Was uh, Lance was Lance involved with war? No, not? I don't think so. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Alum. I'm saying uh, talent that they would. Bam Bam was there. Uh, Abdullah was there. Ray Mysterio Jr. was there. Terry Gordy, the Ward Lord, Scott Pud the, the Ward Lord, <laughs> the Ward Lord. Oh yeah, Ward Lord should become the Ward Lord. Uh, trying to find anybody available. Ultimo Dragon. Yeah. Gato. Jade. Uh, yeah, not not. Doctor Luther. I would like to see a Jericho Sabu Luther thing. <laughs> oh yeah, Sab. I want to see. Uh, you know what? That would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think Sabu could really wrestle anymore. But he's in Vegas. He's a Vegas guy, so it kind of made sense. But you know who else is a Vegas guy? Our friend. Oh my God. I want to see him. I, I want to see Rob Van Dam show up. 100. percent That'd be ridiculous. That Just for ridiculous. like one night, because you know we talked about this too. We're like, when is to go back to the ECW thing? When is AEW going to pull the trigger on their version of ECW? Because every company has done it, right? Well, I, I don't want them to do it though. Impact has done it. WWE's Impact's done, done it, it ad yeah. nauseum. Impact has done it a million times with different names. And you still have dudes floating around. Dreamer, Rhino, Bully Ray, RVD, Sabu. You can throw these guys on one episode of Dynamite. 20-something years ago. Unbelievable, right? And we're still talking about yeah. ECW. Mm -hmm. It's wild. I mean, they did have a, they did have a place in, in history, and they did change the industry. I do think what could happen is, you know, Sabu gets, you know, the living crap kicked out of him. Lights go off, and here's RVD with Fonzie. Oh my god! You know they do. They do something. They could do something. I mean, uh, I think, whatever. I'm looking forward to it. I think. I think it came out of nowhere the Sabu announcement, but I think it's a nice little addition. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll accept it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when asked about future announcements about Collision Show, he said he's being intentionally secretive. 
He confirmed our report that Elevation and Dark were canceled due to the New Deal. The Great New Deal. Interesting. FDR, the New Deal. <laughs> All right, Night of Champions. You ready to do this? Day of Champions. Yeah, I'm ready. Day <laughs> of Champions. Hallelujah. Today, I, I, I am remiss to say that I wish I was watching the event with you today. I know, um, I know, I know. But WWE is in Saudi Arabia. Sami Zayn is in Saudi Arabia. Sami's in Saudi, uh, yeah. He's having a great time. Uh, that's pretty cool for him. He went to Mecca. Yeah. Did you guys uh, see the press conference? Yeah, man. He he, he He's going to get he the pop of the night. Over. Yeah. They of course. Him. Of course. Mm. How do you listen, not? That, that's a good main event right there, right? And this yeah. is how this is how Sammy gets the pin on Roman. I but hope we'll so. talk about that. Yeah, uh, let's go through the card. Yeah. Uh Intercontinental Championship. Gunter defends against Mustafa Ali. That's gonna be a good match. Uh Gunther, very dominant intercontinental champion. Record uh record making IC champ for him. Uh by the way, you know, WWE's done a very good job at, you know, pushing this. And I've and I've said this. For a while now, um, you know, Rich and I have been talking about this, how WWE wants to redo the history books. Mm -hmm. They really don't think having, uh, I'm throwing a name, dude, and, and no knock, like Honky Tonk Man, right? He held a record. Mr. Perfect, he held a record as IC champ. Those names don't resonate with the fans today. You need to modernize this. And that's what they're doing. They put out, BT Sports put out that nice image, and WWE also did, uh, where Roman stands in the rankings. He's 27 days away from breaking Pedro Morales' 1,027-day uh, record. He's another 250 days from uh, breaking Bruno's record, I believe. Wow. Right? Is it Bruno? No. No. no, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Pedro I'm wrong. Morales. Pedro, no, Pedro Pedro's Morales. 27, and who's after that? Hogan? Um, hey, Hogan's third. Bob Backlund? Backlund is, I believe, second. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Well, Bruno has two records, right? Bruno is 2803. Bob mm -hmm. Backlund is 2135. Hogan is 1474. Same so he year he came Bruno to this country, by the way. Record. Did you know that? <laughs> Same year Hulk Hogan came to this country. 1474. You know what? He beat Columbus by 20 years. I feel like people don't talk about that. Yeah. But but he Bruno emerged. came in 1237. You know, when I, I came that. with my family, it was very hard. He we swam had to, over. We we had to we had to find trees. There were no trees in America. Well, Bruno swam over with his family on his back. Hogan walked on the ocean floor. Yeah. Like Godzilla. <laughs> he is a Godzilla. Uh, but, you know, he, he, but this is interesting, right? Okay, so now you got Roman. Thousand days. He'll now go into third, fifth place by passing Pedro. At that point, do you pass Bruno? At 1237. Can you hold it for another 237 days? Well, where, where does that leave Date wise, like what's the closest event to that? MG, what did you say? When would that happen? When uh, he would pass, <laughs> well, he'd pass Hogan next September. So September of 2024. Yeah, but Bruno would be half of that. So he would Bruno pass Bruno. Would be, yeah. So SummerSlam next year, so, roughly, without doing the math. No, yeah. that you are not. I guess I guess that would be the big pay per view. I mean, you, I, I I don't know what they're doing with this title. I still find it bizarre that he has two. He's walking around with two. Um, I we were talking about it off air a little bit. Yeah. What so I, think I don't is know. Happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but this yeah. is exactly what they said they wanted to do, and they're doing it. You know, I don't I don't I don't believe he's going to pass Hogan. If he does, that I'm shocked. Even though people said I reported that, I didn't report it, but I would be shocked. Then I'll take yeah. credit. Once once it happens, I'm like, see, I told you guys. It was me. It was me. They heard my thoughts. Some of these guys on the internet, did you know that? On Twitter? They could get in my brain and see my thoughts. Well, that's because we live in a simulation, Andrew. I don't know if I ever told you my theory about that. <laughs> yes, tell me. Uh, the mole men and Hulk Hogan swam at the bottom of this. <laughs> when Hulk Hogan walked oh. on the bottom of the ocean floor. <laughs> Through the Marianas Trench. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch. Honestly, kind of excited. 
Yeah, man. And you know what? I thought this would have been a great SummerSlam match, but they're doing it now. So Trish is getting that big Saudi payoff. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament Finals, Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. That's going to be a good one. I've been very lukewarm on Seth Rollins lately, but I think this is going to be a great match. I don't love his over-the-top character, but a lot of people love it, and it's really connecting with kids. Uh, oh, yeah. He I, looks like he belongs in the in the, the Muppet Band yeah. with Dr. Teeth. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, man, my whole perspective of wrestling has shifted. I have changed my perspective of wrestling because I have two young kids, six and seven years old, that are very mm. into wrestling now. Taylor is really... It's actually fascinating rich like how into taylor like taylor is into wrestling wow um and i you know their perspective matters because that's what you build your fandom on that's right. how we all started um and and what they like is interesting like you know who she loves dominic mysterio both my kids effing love dominic wow. they they like him because they, they want to see him get booed. They keep asking me to put on the videos or like he's getting booed. <laughs> okay. Bray Wyatt, they ask about constantly. They love oh, Bray wow. Wyatt. They love Drew McIntyre. Um, Seth all Rollins. Very unique, all very unique looking cartoon people. Yeah. All very unique cartoon people. Not into Brock Lesnar. He's not a cartoon. Uh, he's not, not that into he's Cody. a murderer. Not that into yeah. Cody. Those guys are too uh, real. Too real. Yeah, they like the cartoons. And listen, that was all Vince's thing. So, listen, wrestling shifts, styles change, uh, presentation changes, but you also have to look at what the younger generations are into and adapt. Yeah. You know, with, with Danielson, like, um, I want to see Danielson wrestle Omega in a 60-minute every single freaking week. Oh, yeah, every day. <laughs> that's not realistic. <laughs> that's not, that's right. not how you grow your TV. Like, I... I, I'm fine with it. You could have both. I think a balance is needed. You need to you need to accommodate for everything. And I think that's that's a little bit of the problem that WWE has, where they're trying to build. You know, you wonder why is this match on the, on this pay per view, right? I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Right. Why are these two individuals in a match on this pay per view? You don't have to have them on a pay per view, but you know what? You do have to do. Maybe they got new toys coming out. Maybe they're in a new oh, program sure. coming out. Maybe there's new merch coming out for them. You want to present these people on TV because that's how you sell things. It's yeah. more than just wrestling. I mean, that's always been Vince's thing. It's do everything. I agree with what they do always? No, not at all. I, I still have difficulty watching Raw. Oh, it's yeah. much better, but it's still hard to watch some weeks. When did they make that transition to three hours? Years ago. Um, and it was a big deal. When they went, when they went I mean, a lot of the fans were conv like, th like, this is great. Yeah. They loved it. That, that quickly fell apart. And then it fell apart. Yeah, because it's too long. It's hard. Yeah. I think that's the interesting thing where it's like they WWE does the best for WWE. You know, so like all this stuff, even like you said, even if we don't agree with it, you know they're gonna sell toys and merch. And they got like if you go on the WWE shop, you'll see some wacky stuff that the superstars have said, like, oh, I didn't even know they sold like Finn Balor koozies, you know, yeah. or shit like that, or like coolers or like bucket hats or anything you could think of that you could slap a logo on is on that website, you know, and yeah. people buy all this shit, you know, like we've seen how many shows have we been to where you'll see people decked out legit head to toe in one guy's merch, you know, yeah. like Finn Balor socks, sneakers, you know, like the hats, do rags, like the whole nine. I agree with you. I, you know, and AW, you know, AW caters to a very different audience. Is this, yeah. is it a sustainable audience? They're looking at it from the other side. Obviously, they want a younger viewership, but the other mm -hmm. side is, look, Adult Swim, for example, right? This week, yeah. they announced that, what time does Adult Swim start? Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock? Remember, it was like a late night thing. Yeah. They're moving it to 6 p.m. Because younger, view, younger people do <laughs> not watch cable television. It's the, not a the, thing. <laughs> Because the adults that they were originally geared to are now mature adults. And mature they want adults that and they want to go to bed. Early. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. Like, you know, and people are like, what does that have to do with wrestling? It has everything to do with wrestling. Because Absolutely. people, viewer, viewing habits have shifted totally. Yep. And everybody's now trying to figure out what's the angle. I don't know. Right now, it's, it, it, we're, it's a very different 
type of programming. You know, baseball wants to be a shorter game. They're they're doing two and a half hours now, under two and a half hours. The, how do you feel about the pitch clock? I was I w- I was not loving it, but I do like that it, it it has sped up the game. Yes, I agree with that. I had a conversation about that with a couple of buddies where. On one end, uh, one of the guys I was talking to was like, no, no, if I'm paying for baseball tickets, I want to be there for like four hours. I want to get my money's yeah. worth. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I want a two hour game. Like, yeah, I want to go but, in. But you and I, but you, you know, and I, you and I watch baseball very differently. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I'll admit it. I'll admit. I'll admit to this. Yeah. Admit it, Rich. <laughs> most, most stuff. I don't know if it's anxiety or if it's just how I'm wired where. I need quickness and efficiency, and it's almost like I can't wait to leave. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna give you guys yeah. a little secret, okay? Yeah. I, when I go to watch baseball, I take an edible. The first thing I do, mm-hmm. I pop a little edible. I have a couple b- beers. I have my burger, and then at one point, Melt my train will turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> So I need to get on that train before I turn it, it turns into a pumpkin. And I, you know, I leave like sixth inning. I'm done. I'm good. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm good. I be I got there. I watched it. I sat in the seats. I had a great time. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to go home. And then I come home and I don't remember anything from my night. Did, so, you, go, did, I, go to, did you go to the baseball game today? Was I there? <laughs> did I invite Rich on We're Live, pal? Is Rich here? <sighs> Did I invite Rich to this baseball game? <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, back back to the cards. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think uh, I think Seth is going to take it. I feel like that belt was built for Seth to be like a flagship. It would be interesting if he doesn't, right? If he, if they give it to AJ, I'd love to see AJ with that title. I'd be cool with that. Yeah, I, I'm cool with either or. I feel like it, it's going to be Seth for story reasons, but I think if AJ got it, I, I would that would be great too. Yeah. Um, Brock versus Cody. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Um, what a good setup too. Like they, I think, you know, when Brock wants, when Brock is, is in it, he's in it. When he's in it, he's in it. So let's, uh, I'm curious, who do you think takes this? You think they're going to, uh, Brock's going to be Cody and then they go for the third at the slam of summers. I think they're going to go for Cody. I think Cody's going to get it. And also, I'm very interested. The Saudi crowd is very interesting. It's a very unique crowd. And I'm very interested in who gets the bigger pop. Because Brock Lesnar has always gotten like a ridiculous ovation in Saudi Arabia. Right? Yeah. I wonder if Cody's going to get the same thing. Is this Cody's first time on a Saudi show? Is this Cody's first time on a Saudi show? Um, Yes. Did he ever? Yeah, I think so. Right? Was he on the last one? I oh, can't remember. No, no, no. I don't think so. Maybe he, he may was. have still been injured, right? Somebody knows. Who knows? Who wrestles? Yeah, he may have been yeah, he injured. Um, so one thing to be one thing I will tell you that Saudi crowd seems to be a little more uh, up to date on modern uh, WWE because my God, that press conference, Co- Cody's uh, theme song, they all knew it and they were singing the entire thing. That's great. They, that that crowd, I think they watched the battle battleground pay per view and said Puerto Rico here, we'll we'll hold our beer. We got. They don't this drink beer. They don't drink beer. It's a dry country. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Damn yeah, it's it. a dry country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hold our Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you are you telling me that Gonzo is not up on geopolitical uh, situations happening right now? Uh, no comment. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this looks like a cool match. I'm into this. Brock and Cody, SmackDown Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley defends against Natty against Natalia. I love her. You love Natty, right? I do. I do. We're both I think we're both she... big fans of hers. Big Natty fans. Yeah, me too. Big time. Big time. Yep. Absolutely. A lot of cats. Very into cats. I'm cool with that. That's fine. Really cool with that. And you know what kind of cats? What kind of cats? Persian. Oh yeah, that's right. They Don't love cats? Persian cats. <laughs> Baba John. Like cats. Meow. That's how Persian cats meow, by the way. <laughs> meow. It's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm gonna steal that later. Yeah. Meow. Um, what else we got? Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair defends against Asuka. Is this Asuka's Time to take it. I think they. Sh- I felt like they should have put put the belt on her last time. I think. I think. I think Bianca takes it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bianca wins. Yeah. And main your main event. 
uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defend against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. On one hand, if Sami gets the pin, I think that place would erupt. Right? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, there's, there's two, there's three avenues, right? Yeah. Pin straight in the middle of that ring. One, two, three on Roman. Right. Okay. Two, the Usos come out to help Roman and Solo and they F everything up. Right. There's a okay? bunch of bozos. Bunch of bozos. I think that's what's happening. Three, Roman and Solo win. Yeah. With the help of the Usos. Then the story is we did this on our own. And the Usos are like, what the hell do you mean? We got you this title. And then that's the match at SummerSlam. And then Sammy finally or whatever. gets the pin. Or whatever. Sammy gets the pin. At the- Sammy has to get the pin on Roman at some point. Is it going to be in Saudi Arabia? Is it going to be at SummerSlam? That, I Don't feel like that's the we story have right money there. in the bank yeah, next. We have money in the money bank in the next. Bank but here's the other so, thing, right? Oh, you forgot the Raw Women's Champion. No, we spoke about that. We the just Raw did, Women's yeah. title. Yeah. Oh, no. Maybe he's behind. Maybe he's behind. I was like, wait a minute. We forgot it? Um, there's different avenues here. But the real story yeah. is, okay, so, and this is, I'm asking this to everybody, right? What happens when hmm. Kevin and Sammy are no longer in a program with Roman? Mm-hmm. Right? Do do we still react the same to Sammy? I think so. I think he gets even more of a reaction. I think Sammy is in like that perfect Mick Foley position of like right at the cusp of like superstardom, right? Because it wasn't it was that pin that Austin helped him with that really put him and made him a household name, right? Yeah. Yeah, the botched the botched WCW thing where like, oh, if you want to tune into Raw right now, Mankind's winning the championship, right? I think that put him on the map to a, to like the stratosphere. They have Sammy in that corner to they could do the same thing with Sammy in a certain regard, right? Yeah. But when do you pull that trigger? You know? Roman losing in Saudi Arabia does not hurt Roman. Hey, listen, you got all. a second world title now. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can move yeah. him you, you don't have to you don't have to beat Roman ever. You have a second right. title. Yeah. So if that's what they want to do, you can put that title on him. Is it a secondary title belt? Yeah, hundred percent it is. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. You you don't want to you don't want to beat that guy. So now you have another belt. Who do you think takes it? The tag title? Yeah, who wins that match? <sighs> I I think it's gonna be Sammy and Kevin. Uh, cause you want that big celebration at the end. But I do think that the bigger story is that if Roman got it, okay. I, I do like that. I, I mean, that's my personal pick. So very interesting. I'm not going to go into NXT because I don't have time for this. <laughs> I think, I, think <laughs> and I have to tell you, you guys, like the matches are fine. Carmelo Hayes is fantastic. This guy is, is really, you know, Braun Breaker, another fantastic guy. Dragon Lee, Noam Dar, another great match. I just, I don't have it in me. Ilya Dragunov versus Dijak. That's oh be my great god, too. another, and that's going to be great too. These are good matches. Just, I, I, I have not been committed to it. But guess what? They're going head to head with AEW, and I feel like that's just like a weird boner move, right? Yeah, big time. Weird, weird. Why are yeah. you doing? It? And and you know what's going to happen is your your people are going to have to pick. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of this is going to rely around the buzz on social media. Most of that buzz is going to be about Double or Nothing and not about NXT. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. Do mm-hmm. uh, you want to go into the Double or Nothing card let's and then do we'll do it. questions? Yeah, let's do it. So you get your buy-in match uh, tomorrow night, Double or Nothing, 528-23. Uh, your buy-in match is the Hardys and Hook versus Ethan Page and the Guns. I think it's going to be a fun match. I like the Guns. Oh, it was the Guns Ethan Page tagged up with. That is yeah. what happened. Uh, I like the guns. Uh, okay, this will be a fun match. A nice opener with the Hardys in it. Yeah, and Hook. Making it slow you know? on Jeff, you know? Yeah. Hook is over. I'd like to see Hook do a swanton. I want to see-, see Hook do all the Hardy moves. That? Oh, yeah, come out with like... Come out like a Hardy? Fingers? Oh, oh, no, he God. should come out like Lita. The thong <laughs> showing? Can you yeah. imagine that? That'll be fun. He's- He's there, uh, you know what? You know what I do want to see? Am I? Th- nobody talks about it. like I'd love to see the Hardys in FTR. Yes, right. Like that's like a cool, weird matchup. Yeah, I'm into I think, that. 
I think Hardy versus anybody when they're healthy is a great matchup. I want to see Hardy versus job. Jay Lethal and job. Jeff Jarrett. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Jade Cargill puts the TBS title on the line against Taya Valkyrie. This has been going on for a while. You know, Jade is uh, unbeatable at this yeah. point. That's a story that they have told. Is this time to beat her? Do you beat her now? Do you? When do you beat her and who beats her? It's a round number. 16-0 60, 60 right now. So. 60 wow. and 0. Maybe it's Goldberg. <laughs> oh, my God. She just spears Goldberg. Nothing happens. He just stands there and starts bleeding from his forehead. Nothing can touch them. <laughs> <laughs> Orange He's Cassidy got... defends the AEW International title in a 21-man battle, 21-man blackjack battle royale. That's going to be fun. That'll be fun. Does Orange keep it? He should. Ladder match for the TNT title as Wardlow defends against Christian Cage in a ladder match. Wardlord. Wardlord. Uh, Christian should win this. I think so. I also don't want to see Christian on a ladder ever again, to be honest. Like, I know that's what he's famous for, but like, listen, that guy's got to protect his dome, right? What a hateable face. Vince <laughs> are was you, right. Are you of the mindset that you don't like Christian's face? Yeah. And that, you know what? I, I don't mind it when he doesn't have a turtleneck on. With the turtleneck, cannot look <laughs> at that man. <laughs> cannot. He, he does a great job of making himself look like an a-hole. Yeah, he's great. Fantastic. Um, you know what's interesting though? Put that put that TNT title on him and move um and move him to collision. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? That would be interesting. Yeah. And Jay honestly, like he's such a great heel promo that I feel like he's teaching the guys in the back, like every time he has a microphone in his hand. Yeah. Very good. Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm for the AEW women's title. Now, Jamie's hurt, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, she's hurt. So the story is, and they did an angle on Rampage yesterday. Yeah, they took her uh, out again. They beat her up. So yeah. is this the match that we get? I think I I think we're going to get it, but I think Tony's going to take the title back. Mm -mm. I think Tony I think being AEW women's yeah. champion is a great, great uh, person to have. So Jamie can heal up. Yeah. Mm. I like well, Tony a lot. I, I, I you yeah. know, it, they get a lot of crap for the women's division in AEW, but I do think that they've they've made some really good moves the last, I want to say, eight months. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, with Tony having the title, it furthers that outcast story mm -hmm. as opposed to like Jamie made, like retaining it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. FTR even though I do want to see, uh, even though I do want to see Jamie Hayter hold that title forever. Yeah. I like Jamie. She came out of nowhere too. Yeah. She got over naturally. AEW. Uh, tag team titles. FTR defends the titles against Jay Lethal and Double J Def Jeff Jarrett with Mark Briscoe as a special guest referee. Might be match of the night. Do, 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 <laughs> no. do. Would you lose your mind if uh, if Jeff and Jay Lethal won? Oh, that would be the best thing in the world. Jeff, Jeff Jarrett should have every title in that company. <laughs> there would be so Where's much Dixie? heat. And Maybe you know what? what? We did get doing. a Dixie Carter comment. Maybe Dixie will show up. Oh, man. The world's colliding. Mm -hmm. I think I think uh, that whole front row should be all the TNA people. Like classic TNA people from like No, no, no. Test and Albert. Test and Albert intro. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That TNA. Uh, we got the AEW Trios Champions House of Black uh, defend their titles in an open challenge. Uh, it looks like it might be the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Yeah, it is acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Um, I'm not. I'm whatever. I think if if I put the, put him on the acclaimed and Billy Gunn, I want to see Billy Gunn with a with some kind of tag title belt again. Billy holding a belt in that company. Yeah. Oh why my not? god. Jeff should hold it. Billy should hold it. Christian should hold it. All the older guys. That that and you know what? That becomes a program. And Sabu becomes, Sabu wins yeah. the world title. <laughs> that becomes impact. This be it this is turning impact. into impact. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that too loud. It'll happen. Uh Adam Cole versus Jericho in an unsanctioned match with Sabu as the special enforcer. So you know Sabu is gonna do like two or three things. He's gonna point at the ceiling mm -hmm. over and over again. Yep. Um He's he's gonna do something. Top rope leg drop he's, through a table. He's throwing a chair at somebody. Somebody, There's yeah. Someone's gonna be a chair. Where's Fonzie? <laughs> I do want uh, RVD to show up though. He's in Vegas, guys. Come on. 
You can RVD under the ring the entire think, time. Someone someone on the uh, chat mentioned that I think he's under a legend contract still with WWE. So I don't think he can is he? legally. Do you yeah, know how thick that man is? A thick guy. Mm -hmm. He's a thick guy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. think people realize like they underestimate his size. This guy is his his bones are animantium. Has he's like a Wolverine type thickness to him. He's like two Andrews put together. You know what? I want to see that. I want to see Rob Van Dam playing Wolverine. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. I'm into that. Very into that. Uh, um, the Elite. Let's go into this one. Mm. The Elite. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and Hangman Adam Page battle against the Blackpool Combat Club. John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Huta in an Anarchy in the Arena match. Mike cool. Sepervivi on Wrestling Observer Live had a great idea. He said the entire time they should play what song? What song do you think he said they should play the entire match? I know what I um, would get, choose. The natural, na oh. natural Boring Killers. Mm -hmm. Really? Why not? Do it. Okay. I would okay. love that. A little little tribute to uh, the, the most insane human being ever to exist in wrestling. I would love I that. Think they might do, I think they might play Kansas the whole time. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That's actually even funnier. If they play mm -hmm, Kansas yeah. and they're, they're acting, mm -hmm. you know, they come out like New Jack. Oh, my God. <laughs> Such a bunch of New Jacks running around. Mm -hmm. And then now we got we got the world title match. MJF versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry versus Sammy Guevara versus Darby Allen in a four pillars match for the AEW world title. This I have not loved this. Um, they could do something great. What do you think, Rich? I agree with you. Like, I'm. I, I'm 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 not on the fence about this match. I think the match is going to be awesome. I think there's going to be some wacky shenanigans. But this is one of those storylines where I'm like, I'm not invested. I have no like it's not that I don't care about it. But me personally, I think you're in the same boat. Eh, I'm, all, I'm all right with it. You know, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and you know what they're doing. You know, they're setting this up for like definitely setting this up for more future main events. Right. Because these guys are the young guys. They're going to be around for a long time. They're probably going to be there longer than a lot of the legends that they have under contract. Um, and I think this might be a little like a like a taste of the future, especially for those future highlight reels or video packages that they put together. You know, five years from now, yeah. this match will be referenced like a lot, you know. Yeah, and I hope that it, it's it's a successful match and it builds to mm -hmm. their story and it builds to whatever they're going to do in, in the years coming. I, I just, yeah. I, I think it, not, it's just too much going on. Yeah. You know, I don't it's think it was lot. presented in the right way. It's a lot going Can on. Can I mention? And, yeah. Yeah. Can I mention something real quick? Um, Something that uh, I thought interesting about this weekend. So far, so last year at this time, remember... Andrew was in Vegas and the three of us were going back and forth. Andrew was getting up to the minute uh, reports. There was no drama this year so far yeah. at double or nothing. I mean, but, but I mean, the CM smooth. Punk stuff was too much already. Yeah. <laughs> that, that stuff has really there's meant no, there's nothing. Over. Will he or won't he show up stuff uh, happening? Cause remember that was a big deal last year. Like uh, Rich and I did a show and that's all we talked about was this is MJF going to show up at the pay-per-view and now, and now it's seemingly he's in this feud and it just seems flat. So it's nerve wracking. It was nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for the card. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be doing wrestling observer live. It'll be live at six o'clock. Be joined by Nick Houseman to discuss the card. So that is what I'm doing tomorrow. He's in the House of Black, right? What? He's in the House of Black, right? He's in the House of Black. Yeah, Nick Houseman <laughs> in the House of Black. Uh, is it time for questions? It's time for questions. Submit your questions in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. Use the hashtag Ask Mattman. It just makes it easier uh, for me to find them. Yes. MG, can you can you post the questions? Oh, you want me to post them? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay. cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. I'm, a, I'm a little lost here. I'll, I'll do one, but just uh, get my back on them. Okay. You ready? Yeah. yeah go ahead. All right, let's go. Number one, this is from Trey. Okay, Atkins. I got to turn something on. Let me turn it on real quick. Yeah, turn it on. <laughs> turn, turn the machine on. <laughs> he has like a big wheel, and he has to like do one of these to get it going. 
he's like lost. He's, he's, he's in the pit spinning like that wheel of pain. It's burrowing right, to China. Gotta do some, oh, okay, there you go. There we go. It's up. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> when do you think Bray Wyatt comes back around Money in the Bank or just before SummerSlam? I don't know. There was a weird QR code on the back uh, during Raw in a backstage moment, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I have no idea about Bray's status. Originally, I was told that he was only out because he wasn't feeling well. That obviously is not the truth here. Uh, There's something going on. Whether it's creative or personal issues, I have no idea. Uh, Nobody's talking about Bray. But listen, you know, uh, there's obviously a problem here. Yeah. And that last run with Uncle Howdy was terrible. Mm -hmm. Just really weird. Went on too long. And that was it. And the so LA I, Knight stuff also, like, yeah, you know, it kind of fizzled, right? Yeah, thank God he he survived it, LA Knight. Absolutely, I think he tweaked his character just enough to yeah. not be forgotten, you know. Because yeah. that that's you know, think about it. Like, if you're fighting for TV time, and then the guy that you're in a program with kind of like just disappears, you know, you're left in the lurch. Yeah. Uh, here's a comment from Devin Baker. OMG, I've been watching, listening forever, but I'm here live for the first time. Oh, bow, bow, bow. Devin Baker. Thank you, Devin. Thanks, Devin. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, this is from a Sue. Will Tony Khan be asked about the lower attendance and lower ratings in the double or nothing press conference? I don't know. I, I, I'm sure somebody has thought about asking it. Um, it's i mean i think i think everybody knows the answer i don't know what he's not gonna what is he gonna say to that yeah like like i I don't know (laughs) imagine if he just like straight up is like i don't know i don't know man it's been shit i don't know listen the show is not bad it's just uh you know in order to maintain viewership you gotta constantly evolve you need interesting programs and i think you know they've had a number of issues here sam punk that has dwelled over everybody um i i i think they, they've been trying to do too much but there's mm-hmm. a reason there's a reason for everything that they're doing so yeah, i yeah. hope that this is the beginning of the, sh- the changeover for them but who knows maybe it doesn't really change anything over and this is all they could do they they sit out in the 800s i feel like we're weren't we supposed to get like um like a switchblade match on the card or no am i wrong about that uh the, it is. Oh, so sorry. My God, my coffee just expired in me. Did I just put um, you to sleep? Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, Switchblade is not on the card. Interesting. I feel like yeah. he should have been on the card. That's just me. All right. Um, this is from Devin Baker. When is the Rhea and Dom wedding? If it were up to me, we'd have weddings every week. Who would you most like to see get married? Hashtag Ask Batman. Oh, Brock Lesnar and mm-hmm. Omos. Oh, hell yeah. That's who I want to see get married. Let's just do I don't know. <laughs> I can't do, do a good it. Brock Lesnar impression. <laughs> Let's just do it. Uh, uh, who, yeah. yeah, I think they're going to end up doing the wedding. You could do it at SummerSlam. How about that? That'd be great. Yep. But then Damien Priest ends up marrying Finn Balor accidentally. Damien Priest ends up marrying <laughs> Finn Balor by mistake. What a... And you know what? Nobody believes them it was done by mistake. That's the sitcom. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> and like they they got to live together somehow. Something wacky happens and they got to live together. But they they're married but not really. Love but it. Then they then they start acting like an old married couple. Yeah, great. And fantastic. I'm so into this 80s sitcom. <laughs> uh this is from Hogan. How would you feel about Hulk? Roman somehow? I think so. Terry? It's Terry. <laughs> How would you feel about Roman somehow scheming his way into that third belt at Night of Champions? It would certainly be a way to cap off day 1000. Oh, my yeah. God. Imagine. I, I, <laughs> I have no problem with it, dude. Right now, I I'm totally that. OK with that. I'm totally OK with that right now because it has not happened and I don't see it happening. But if it does happen, maybe I'll change my opinion. And be like, oh, he's taking all the title. I think it should happen. I think I think I'm into chaos and that adds chaos. Absolutely. Throw one belt on each shoulder and then the third one around his neck. Mm hmm. Love it. <laughs> This is making a pseudo armor with these belts. This is from uh, Kuro Metariku. Have you ever done improv with Nick Houseman? Have you ever done improv with Nick Houseman? 
Have you? Who, me? No. Have you ever done improv with Nick Houseman? I didn't even know he was an improv guy. That's how he knows Colt. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've never done improv. You've never I've yet never, ended. I've you never, never done improv with, with Nick Houseman. Houseman. I'm not have against you ever done it. improv? I've never done improv. I think this whole show is improv. This whole dude. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Sanders is not even my name. I think this whole fucking show is improv, right, Andrew? <laughs> Uh, Jay White uh, and Ricky Starks are in the Blackjack Battle Royale. Oh, cool. Yeah, put yeah. that belt on um, uh, Switchblade. Yeah. Uh, this is from Balor Club. What's up, boys? With Cody going into his match with a broken arm, I think this will be a Cordy, Cor- Cody torn peck situation where Cody does the unthinkable. Who's your pick, Brock or Cody? Or uh, Brock kills him and he can't compete. Just like murders him, and then like mm-hmm. you get like it banged up Cody. Mm-hmm. That could happen. All right. Uh, let's see. This is from MCASP. Will MJF remain AEW champion the rest of 2023? If not, who beats him? Great question. I don't know. Um, there is something that I do know that indicates that he won't hold it the entire year. But that's only my, that's only, I, I have no, I'm going to rephrase that. I don't want to get misquoted. I do know something that makes me think it is possible for him to lose it this year. I don't know okay. if that's, in, that's, that's happening. I, I don't know if it'll affect it in any way, but I, I think you have to do whatever is good for the story. So if it's good for the story that this guy holds it for the rest of the year, that's fine, but who are his opponents? So right now he's doing this four pillars match. Uh, the conversation is that it possibly could be Adam Cole and him. Mm. I don't think Cole should beat him for the title, but then who? Do you go back to the old guard and have it be like one of your tried and true studs? Or do you end up finishing the punk feud when punk eventually comes back? You end up finishing the punk feud when he comes back. Does he beat him for the title? Because remember, CM Punk never lost the title. Right. CM Punk, he never lost it. So, you know, he can say he's here to take his title back. Whether or not they do that, I don't know. I don't know if they should. You know, do you reward him? Do you put the title on him? I don't know. Well, remember this. If you put the title on Punk, he's going to have to be on both shows. And kind of, isn't that what they're trying to avoid right now? Well, you could mm-hmm. you could you could swap people. I mean, listen. First of all, yeah, that, know, that whole that this whole thing is so silly, ridiculous. Yes. That that you you're, you're refusing to be in the building with the person. It's business. I I get it. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of egos. There's a lot of personalities. I deal with lunatics all day long. You got to work together. Figure it out. Yeah. You're adults. If you yeah. if you cannot physically if you believe that you you cannot be around this person because you will physically hurt them or you will have a confrontation with them then you should uh, it, then it's a problem. Exactly. You know, you're you're here for the greater good and that's AEW. You're not here for yourself or and that's the problem. Maybe you are and that's a problem. Company first. I'm such a corporate stooge, huh? <laughs> Uh, this is from Joel Arias, dollar ninety nine super chat. Thanks, Joe. Who should win the world title, AJ or Seth? I would love to see AJ with it, but I think it's going to be Seth. Same here. I would also like to see AJ win it, bring it to the OC, and then resume their feud with Judgment Day, as if like like stuff is on the line or whatever. I don't you know. Do something fun. So if yeah. they he wins it, does the whole OC go back to Raw? Because he's on SmackDown. Oh yeah, he is on SmackDown. Oh, that's so that's right, part yeah. of the that's part of the conundrum with having everybody yeah. fight for this title. It just no, made it confusing. No, I get it. It's mm. obviously it's Seth, but I would love AJ yeah. to take it. Yeah, same here. Uh, let's see what do we got here. Uh, this is another one from Trey. Uh, thoughts on when we see Drew back in WWE? They drafted him, but he hasn't shown up uh, for a week since WrestleMania. I think soon. I I believe it's soon. Yeah, why not? Right after the Saudi show, you know, put a yeah. fresh coat of paint on him. Um, I, I, he should get rid of that sword. I, I'm not a fan of the sword. Yeah, same here. It's it's ran its course. Yeah. 
My uh, son loves it, though. Hunter loves it. Oh, of course, he's a giant guy with a big sword. Yeah, course. Hunter. I was talking to him yesterday. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like, oh, I like, I like Drew McIntyre. I'm like, why? He goes, oh, I like his sword and I like his motorcycle. So he has a Drew McIntyre toy and he came on a bike. Sweet. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder why. But he has like this gnarly motorcycle and sword. Why not? Why not? Uh, this is from John. If or when Punk gets announced for Collision, how many more tickets do you expect them to sell? This is right up your alley, Andrew. Do you expect two to three K sales or go to six to nine K sales? I, I would say two to three K. Okay. Remember, the first time he came back, we hadn't seen him in seven years. And there wasn't emotion. There wasn't negative emotion associated to him at that moment. Now it's, you know, he should come back as a freaking heel. You want to totally turn everything? And play into it. He comes back as a heel, mm -hmm. and he's like, "F you, people! You turned on, you turned your back on me when you don't even know the facts." Here comes Samoa Joe. And that like, makes I'll a tell lot you of sense. Facts. Actually, <laughs> I'll tell you the f and facts. You're a piece of crap. I've known you for all these years. I've kicked your ass all these. Blah 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 blah. Now you got a program there, and he's and he could do like a heel stable. Oh yeah. Yeah, Tim, yeah, Hobbs, you know, you could do something interesting with Punk. I do think Punk <laughs> should have a stable. Yes. I think he needs associates. Remember, he's always been alone. Yeah, I think he definitely needs like a couple of guys. FTR, you know, like FTR are the perfect yeah. guys to be in. FTR Punk's is a great corner, group. You know? Yeah, you could have you could have FTR and another person. And now you have this interesting group. I, as I was saying, I'm not a fan of the, there's too many groups and trios. But I think in this yeah. case, it kind of works. Uh, well, who would be a good fourth for them? That's a great question. Um, I would say Hobbs. Put a young guy. Hobbs. Put a young guy. He's a monster. He's a big, giant beefcake. Mm -hmm. Why not? That's a good rub. That's a pretty good rub. But again, like, are we going to get cheated Mesquite. out of seeing... Mesquite's a good rub. Yeah. <laughs> great rub. Are... Are we going to get cheated out of seeing Punk and FTR versus the Elite? Probably, right? I I don't know if that match is even possible to happen. But right. if if you are given an opportunity like this, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't happen too often in wrestling. You don't get these opportunities, right? Missed opportunity. We talk about this all the time. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity with Hogan and Austin. Missed opportunity with Austin and Goldberg. Missed yeah. opportunity with um, uh, uh, I got the see. So sorry, Macho uh, Man and Shawn Michaels. Macho and Shawn Michaels. Missed opportunity to do Shawn and Brett again. Yeah, you know, obviously for all the circumstances, there are tremendous there are these there are these moments in wrestling that you don't get a chance to do it again. It is. In this bizarre universe, they have created the hottest story in wrestling outside of the bloodline, and that is the the CM Punk elite situation. You sold out that stadium, right? right. That stadium is, uh, is you know, 65,000, 60,000, 65, 70,000. Obviously, they'll finish above 70 when, when we're here. Maybe you don't do it now. But if there was ever an opportunity... To go into a market and sell out a stadium with just one match, that is it. Oh, yeah. And it's, it, it could be a trios. It is a huge opportunity to make money and to make history. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Punk knows it. FTR knows it. That's why FTR has been an advocate to making this work. Yep. And you know what? And people are yelling at them and they're blaming them. And they're like, why are you pushing this? What are you, dumb? Because it's right, one of the exactly. biggest money matches you could possibly do in this generation of wrestling. Exactly. It's a business. Business, as Dusty would say. I want to see it. I want to see Kenny, and I want to see Kenny and Punk. I want to see uh, Punk and Ma uh, Danielson. I want to see that trios match between all of them. Oh, absolutely. So much money to be made. So much attention to be brought to your product. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, you have failed. At the end of the day, right. it and it's not it's not punk, and it's not it's and you know what? When that happens, listen, I follow that Steve Wynn mentality, right? Do you know that story about Steve Wynn? He went into his hotel, and the glass was dirty, right? And I, listen, I'm not a, I'm not a 
saying I'm a fantasy win, but I do like this this process. Okay. Mm. I don't know if he's done any kind of bad stuff. I don't know his personal story. So I'm not I'm not advocating for Steve Wynn. I'm just saying this is a great example, and I've learned a lot from this as dealing with lunatics. This guy goes into his hotel, and the glass is dirty, you know, for the doors. So what does he do? There's this lady that cleans. And goes she, He goes to the manager, whoever's in charge. He's like, hey, listen, make sure that the glass is clean. It was a brand new hotel that had just opened. Manager says, okay. Comes back again, there's fingerprints all over that glass, and he says again, he's like, hey, listen, I told you, make sure the glass is clean. I, I'll tell her again, I'm so sorry, I'll tell her again. Tells, Does it again, and at this point, you know what Steve does? He doesn't fire that woman. He fires the manager. Mm -hmm. You didn't get your job done. You had to do something, you didn't think it's a priority, you didn't get it done, it's your fault, you're not a good leader. You should be able to decide, like, okay, do we keep her? Is she doing something wrong? It shouldn't be the boss that decides that. In Tony's case, the blame goes on management if you cannot make this work. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. I'm not saying that Tony's a bad manager. Also, don't don't tweet him that. Right, 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 right. I think Tony's doing great stuff. I'm just saying, I would take personal... If I was in that position, I would take this as a personal responsibility and that I have failed if I cannot deliver this. I'm not saying that he has to deliver it today or tomorrow. I'm saying, overall, if he cannot deliver that match, then it's a failure. Yeah. And the same goes for Vince and not being able to do, you know, Austin Gold. I mean, Austin Goldberg different, right? Injuries happen, but yeah. politics also play. And that that is all secondary. If you cannot make it work and you cannot make politics go away, then you have failed as a leader. And that is why I'm announcing today that I am running for mayor of the city of New York. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, listen, I'd vote for you. We, we got a <laughs> we got a real number. <laughs> <laughs> I'd move there just to vote for you. Yeah. Someone like me um, could never be up. someone like me would never run and could never become anything in politics because you th these people are all psychopaths. We got a real character in the office. I think if Eric Adams got voted in, you can get voted in. He's at zero bond all day partying. And He's in every nightclub. And, and listen, you'd still be a better choice than de Blasio. <laughs> hey, Mayor de Blasio, do something oh, about no. my garbage. It's piling up. <laughs> Is this is this your hint that you want us to start calling you Mayor's Aaron? <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm gonna get Maybe. back to the. Uh, I see Adams out here. when I'm out. I, I was I was at a venue and he was there. It was a nice members only venue. A couple man, weeks that guy ago. Man, parties. Guy parties hard. Parties man. all freaking night. Joel has a follow up question to the CM yeah. Punk stuff. All uh, right, what's the follow up? Um, mm -hmm. It is. There it is. What happens if CM Punk gets hurt? Listen, it's just one of those things. You you don't know what happens yeah. if Roman breaks his arm tonight. You know, you don't know. It, these, it, right. it is a, it's a gamble that you take every single day. It's a very dangerous mm. job when they're not they're not you know in a controlled environment like a movie set. This is they'll pivot. They'll pivot just they'll like pivot. they had to do last year. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know, you you. I, I I'm not one to think that you need to consider that as your obviously you do always and you have a backup plan, but you, they, they shouldn't think like, well, he could get hurt. I can't do this with him. Do as much as you can with him and get it done. Mm. Uh, let's see. This is a good one. This is from Brad Smith. Do, you want to do a couple more and then we'll get yeah. out of here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, does Danielson ever win the AEW title before he retires? What do you think? I think so. I think he should get that belt. 100% he should. 100% yeah. he should because the importance of him coming in was uh, a big part in their success story. You know, getting Punk... Getting Adam Cole and getting uh, Danielson on the same freaking night mm. really was a big deal. Yeah. Um. But again, you need a good story for that, right? Yeah. For the for for him to get that title well, and make told, it believable. I mean, they've told the story that he just can't cut the mustard. Yeah, but I in think those big moments. Does, well, does he win as a heel or does he win as a face? I think that's the thing, you know, because face Danielson is couldn't cut heel? the mustard. But is he a heel? Oh, a, Do people see him as one? He's hitting dudes in the eyes with screwdrivers, man. Yeah, but like, I think he's a, just, <laughs> he's a violent dude. He's not, you know, I can't I don't look at the, I don't look at that, that faction at all as heels. I look at him as kind of neutral. You know what I want to ask? Ass. You know what I do want to ask? And I, mm. and I would love to ask him this, okay? Maybe I'll ask Dave to ask him or something. Maybe I'll just reach out. Um, whenever he gets obsessed over the title, he kind of turns into Smeagol. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
In WWE, yeah, yeah, yeah. that last run when he was going for the title, remember, like, his shoulders got hunched a little bit. He looks a little bit more worn. Yeah, yeah. You know, very how deranged. he sees it. Very deranged. And he did that a little bit in AEW, too, where it, like, consumes him yeah. to get it. I find that... If I have manifested that, I think I, I should be Booker of the Year in the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame, and because I think it's a great story for him. If not, if that is what they have done, I, I think it's great. Also, does anybody you're, else see that, or am I delusional? No, you're not delusional. I, you know what, I would love if that was the mandate going forward with the AEW title is that it turns it's it turns whoever it's on into like a schmiegel, oh, you know, or like what a great MJF's, story. MJF starts like doing it, and then the next guy gets the curse, you know. And then at some point, somebody's got to destroy the belt and make a new belt, you oh, know. Just dude, to, like... that's a great story. <laughs> like it consumes you. You start getting you don't sleep. Your eyes have bags yeah. under them. You just become dilute, like insane over time. Have they ever, have they and ever then they find like out. A... You know what the problem is? The belt is made out of lead, Dang. and that was the problem <laughs> all along. Like a radioactive belt. Have they They're ever just done like poison? Have they ever done a cursed Lord of the Rings belt story on wrestling? I love it. They could do that with any. Listen, that's like I think that would be a fantastic storyline idea. Where even the uh, the international intercontinent, whatever, whatever the Orange Cassidy belt is, um, have him start turning into like some kind of goblin, and then they people realize it's because of the belt. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it, dude. Uh, what else do we see, have? So two more. Uh, this is from Get Boonked On. Why are you so gorgeous? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Let's see here. Uh, have you heard recent resignings going on in WWE, especially with cuts about to happen before the deal with Endeavor closes? Uh, have you heard of recent wrestling news? Uh, I, I have not. That's a great question, and I'll follow up. I have not heard it. Sure. Uh, let's see here. Are AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery negotiating the next TV deal currently, or will they just pick up the option for another year? No, so I think they're negotiating. Joe. Yeah. yeah, they're negotiating. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got time for one more good question, guys. Okay. Uh, oh, here's a good one, actually. If Asuka loses from Noob and Co. TV, if Asuka loses to Bianca at Night of Champions, what's next for her? I would like to see a storyline with damage control feud with EO as Matman. Uh, if Asuka loses to Bianca and Night of Champions, what's next for her? I would like to see a storyline between damage control feuding with EO. I mean, EO feuding for the title. Uh, you could do Bailey for the title. There's a couple it feels options. like they're It feels like they're splitting up that and making EO a face. So I think yeah. that that's that's very likely. What if what if Oscar wins tonight and then that's the next program? Maybe that is the next program. It could Maybe be they fun. Could do them. Yeah, totally cool with that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's one from Pro Wrestling Joe. Yeah. I don't know if we have time for the answer, but ask Zarian what he puts in his hair every morning before I, we go. I have a special blend of like a like a like a <laughs> spiking gel, spiking cream <laughs> that I uh -huh. do this. I that's what my he hair forward it. and then I flip it. <laughs> And then I have big sexy hairspray. That's what it's called. And I hit it with the hairspray. Every day at five in the Every morning. Every day. <laughs> Every day, five in the morning. It takes me like two and a half hours to get it going. <laughs> I just that, take the wig off, dude. Not. This is the reality. I take the piece <laughs> off, I put it on the mannequin, and I put the put the Thursday one on, on Thursday, mm -hmm. and I put the Friday one on on Friday. That's it. Yeah, the Saturday <sighs> wig is one of my favorites. The Saturday <laughs> wig is high. Mm -hmm. The Monday, Monday, Tuesday one, terrible. No, that's like that's you, you know you're letting people know that you're starting the work week, so it's not as high as it should be at the end of the week. The Sunday one goes all over the place. Sometimes it's like a double mohawk, like that guy from Prodigy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what a what a uh, I hate what a weird song. Oh, here's another one. I'm actually more curious about what you put in the beard. Nothing. The beard has nothing. It's all natural. Mm -hmm. No, just for men. Uh, I. <laughs> Shoe polish, brother. Shoe, yeah, shoe polish. <laughs> uh, I do have a bunch of grays, though. My grays are coming in. Nothing on my head, but all in my beard. Oh, I got my first uh, gray hair on my head the other day. Yeah. It's just standing straight up, hanging That's out. That's it. Let, That's letting fine. the world know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let, let's do one more good wrestling question. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, one more, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. Let's do one uh, more. I got to clean up the yard. 
Are we sure he doesn't just use a black Sharpie? <laughs> dude, it's all... Dude, this is fake, too. It just comes off. It's glued on. <laughs> I I do love I'm totally that. hairless. I, again, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, nothing. I, it, it takes me hours to put this hair on. You Yeah, one day you were like... <sighs> I'm gonna do my best to try to look like Bobby Lashley. Are you gonna um uh, are you gonna tattoo your eyebrows on? This is tattooed. This is <laughs> Those are tattooed, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does it bother you when um folks ask about your hair and your routines? I'm so used to it uh that I I just like I'm like, all right, this is what I use, this is what I do. I get asked constantly. It, it's so regular for me to be at people ask me. There's a certain set of people that constantly ask me if my eyebrows are dyed. Oh, wow. I get that a lot. Interesting. With one specific group of people. Okay. One group of people constantly ask me that, and I don't know why. I mean, they, they, they're very dark. Yeah. But so is my beard. And my do hair. You, you get your eyebrows done? I do them. Really? Yeah, I do. You do the threading? You do the threading yourself? I do. I do the. It actually, it doesn't really grow much more because I've mm -hmm. plucked it so much. This is a bizarre conversation on that, man. Uh, so I've I, always been fascinated by by what's going on on your head and face. So yeah, everybody is because it's so daunting. <laughs> you know, you see, it's so loud. You know, daunting is the word I use. <laughs> You're like, why is that man's eyebrows that way? Why is his beard like that? Is his oh, hair here real? Go. Here's a good one. Yeah. Um, who would you work for, AEW or WWE, if they wanted to hire you, which one? Hmm. How do you know one of them doesn't want to hire me? That's true. It's tough, man. Um, would you ever work for WWE or AEW? Um, I don't want to answer that. Whatever Andrew picks, I'd have to go with the opposite company. <laughs> I, I I will say this: I don't think either company would be, would be able to afford me. So, <laughs> and for the amount of work I want to put in, does that make sense? Yeah, you want to work one day a week for three hours with a two-hour yeah. break. <laughs> well, I, I would tell you, AEW AEW would have a, a I guess easier schedule. Yeah. Uh, WWE, I would have to go to Connecticut. Right. So I, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's not a bad drive. It's 35 minutes. Listen, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, okay? I have no problem. I don't see it as a negative. If AEW mm -hmm. called, like, let's put it out. The WWE wanted me to go to work for them. If it financially makes sense, you know, I would have to be an idiot not to take it, right? Mm -hmm. But that would mean I can't do this. And for me, same thing goes for AEW. I right. wouldn't be able to do this. And for me, this is a this is an escape from reality. I think we do a great show. I think we've made an impact on pro wrestling coverage. I think we have we have made our mark. Are you ending the show right now? Uh, with that said, uh, my toaster my toaster's here. I'm gonna go in the tub. Uh, I you know I don't want to I don't want to stop this. I've had many opportunities. To come that I can't, I would not mm. be able to do this. And I've said, no, I enjoy what I do. So if they made it worth my while, maybe, but probably not. Plus, if Andrew had to leave, it would just be me and Mr. Gonzo uh, doing the show. And nobody wants to see that. Yeah, I, I probably would, would not go. Listen, you want to hire me as a consultant. I've got no problem. I'm not, I'm not a, a journalist. I don't, I'm, I'm a media personality. Right. Yeah, exactly. And like I think I actually, a lot of people get that confused and I don't care. Like I don't have a, a gripe to pick with either company. Cause you know why I could see my opinions. Cause I'm not bought and paid for nobody right. paid. Neither company pays us. And we also or really limit our ads. We don't uh, adhere to advertisers. We don't adhere to that. We it's, it, these are just free thoughts that we have. Or, you know, you could tell them the truth and that, you're in the pocket of both companies somehow and they don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Double, double dipping. dipping. That's the way to do it. Double do dipping. It. Double getting, dipping. Getting them Tony Khan paychecks and them Triple H paychecks. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that explain it? That explains it. All right. I get a little nervous when people ask me that. Who would you work for? 
I would I would love to be hired for either company as a morale officer. Where do you think I would thrive better? You just go around and cheer people up in WWE. You would Maybe a little bit more. Rich would just leave you... whoopee cushions everywhere in the locker rooms. <laughs> I think you would do. I think you would do well. I think you would do amazing for both companies. And then after a week, I would get a phone call that says, "You got to get me out of here. You got to get me out of here, dude." No, uh, you, you know when you would get it. Here. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Like, I, I'm All like, right. can you effing believe it? I got to go to work. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the next flight home. What am I doing in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> what am I doing in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, exciting stuff. All right. Uh, I get, that's get your it. Toast is ready. Huh? Yeah. yeah, my toast so get- is ready. I got to go clean up my yard. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for today. Love each and every one of you. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy Night of Champions. Are you watching it, Rich? Uh, night of you're going to watch later. No, I can't. I got to watch yeah. it at another time. All right. Uh, you watch it tonight. I'm going to be watching. Yeah. I'll be tweeting. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We'll see you all next time. All right. Meet men. Mwah.